Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this Yale Up Close virtual information session all about the performing arts. Um, there are over 500 of you registered to join us this evening from across the country and all around the world. So we're just going to wait a few more moments until we get started. But in the meantime, thank you so much for making the time. And we are so excited that you're here. All right, I think we are all settled into the Zoom. Um, I'm going to say good evening because it is a, a gorgeous kind of late summer, early fall evening here in New Haven. But I know that some of you are joining us from outside the United States as well. So good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good middle of the night for some of you intrepids. Um, welcome to this Yale Up Close session all about the performing arts. Um, it's our hope that you have been able to engage with Yale um, through some of our virtual information sessions, our social media channels, and so on and so forth. But tonight, we are here to share all about the wonderful world of performing arts on campus. My name is John Yi. I'm an Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions here. Um, I'm an alum of the Yale Alley Cats, the Whiff and Poofs, and the Yale Symphony Orchestra. So I'm a huge fan of performing arts here. Um, and I'll let uh, Margaret Dahl introduce herself as well. I am um, a huge, more a fan of the arts than a performer of the arts. I was the Director of Admissions for several decades and I'm now a senior person in the admissions office and I love doing this session. Great. And we are joined by a truly all-star cast of Yale undergraduates who are involved in performing arts here on campus. Um, I just want to let you know that like this is an exceedingly busy time for Yale undergraduates. Classes are in full swing. Thursday night is like when everything seems to happen on campus. And the fact that we have such incredible representation across all the disciplines, I think speaks to um, the fact that Yale students are not only talented in the arts, but so excited to, to connect with you all considering your interest in the arts. So we're going to go around this Zoom box, if you will, um, and I'll give each of our panelists an opportunity to introduce themselves. So we'll start with Stella. Hi, everyone. My name is Stella. I am a senior in Davenport College. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I'm studying cognitive science with a concentration in climate change behavior and communication. Um, here at Yale, I've been really lucky to be involved in the performing arts in a few different ways. Um, primarily, I sing with one of Yale's 17 different a cappella groups. I sing with Shades of Yale. We sing music of the African diaspora and African American tradition. I've also had the pleasure of singing with the Yale Undergraduate Jazz Collective. I've been a part of um, Yale Theater through the commencement show last year. I'm sure that there are many people who can talk to that um, as well. And yeah, I'm super excited to be here and answer any and all questions. Oh, and I also um, take voice lessons for credit and I'm involved um, in the music school in that way. So happy to answer all of your questions. Wonderful. And I'm going to embarrass Stella a little bit. I actually uh, read Stella's application to Yale. Um, so it's this wonderful full circle moment that we're now on this Zoom together. Um, Gabrielle. Hi everyone, I'm Gabrielle, I use she, her pronouns. I am a senior in Pearson College. I am originally from New York City and I, at Yale, I'm an American studies major with a concentration in arts and culture. At, Dan, uh, at Yale, I've been really involved in the dance and theater communities on campus, um, both in the curricular and extracurricular spheres. Um, I've been mentored by the head of dance, Emily Coates, and I've taken almost all the dance courses offered. Um, in the extracurricular sphere, I'm a member of TAPS at Yale, Yale's best and only tap dance group. Um, I am associate producer and rehearsal director of the Yale Dance Lab, um, and I've choreographed around 15 musicals and operas for undergraduates and at the School of Drama. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Gabrielle. Um, Santana, how about you? Hi, everybody. I'm Santana. I am a junior in Berkeley College. I'm originally from Waukesha, Wisconsin, uh, and I am an environmental studies major. Um, at Yale, I've been involved in dance, uh, theater, and a cappella on the dance side. I am a member of Yale Dancers, which is Yale's oldest dance group here on campus. Um, I also have choreographed and performed in theater. Um, so for example, um, Stella mentioned the commencement musical. I was one of the choreographers on that project last uh, spring. 
Um, and on the theater side, I've also taken many theater classes and performed in a few shows here and there. Um, and I also sing with the Society of Orpheus and Bacchus, one of the other 17 a cappella groups here on campus. And yeah, I, uh, it's a whole lot of fun. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Santana. Um, Santana and I also often run into each other at the gym because we both love powerlifting. So there's that. Um, Lil, how about you? Hi, I'm Lil. I'm a senior in Saybrook. I'm from Minnesota. And at Yale, I've been involved in lots of things. I'm a humanities major, um, but I have directed Yale Sketch Comedy Group. I've been in lots of um, independent theater productions, as well as through the um, Dramat, which is Yale's like largest theater organization. I host a weekly comedy show in students' backyards for people who live off campus. And I also host um, an open mic for people of New Haven, people who are graduate students and undergrads as well. Thank you so much, Lil. Uh, Matthew. Hi, everyone. I'm Matthew. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a junior in Trumbull, and I'm majoring in neuroscience. Uh, I'm originally from Laurel, Maryland, but here at Yale, I'm in the Yale Symphony Orchestra. I play oboe and English horn. Um, besides that, I'm in the Undergraduate Chamber Orchestra, which is a small group of students who play um, chamber works or student composed works. Uh, I've also been in YSO's Contemporary Music Ensemble um, and subbed with the Berklee College Orchestra. I'm a part of the Lessons for Credit program here. This is my second year doing Lessons for Credit. And um, I'm in Wendy Sharp's chamber music class also at the School of Music. Very cool. Woodwinds in YSO forever. I got you there, Matthew. Um, Jordy. Hello, everyone. Um, apologies for the kind of insane setup right now. I am actually in New York. I am in a Starbucks. I was invited to perform at 54 Below. If you know what that is, I'm performing some, some music of some yeah, alumni, which I'm really excited about. And it's my debut at 54 Below, um, which has been always been a dream of mine. So that's the, why I'm in Starbucks. I would typically be in my room. But uh, I use see they pronouns. I am a double major in the history of science and medicine and in theater studies on campus. I'm primarily involved in theater. I've done like, almost 20 productions, mostly as a performer. Um, some of my favorites, I played the MC in Cabaret. Uh, I played Paul in A Chorus Line, some of my favorite things I've done. I also dance with Rhythmic Blue, which is our urban dance and hip hop dance group on campus, which has been incredibly, incredibly fun. And yeah, I'm a big lover of the arts and I've been excited to do it both curricularly and extracurricularly. So. Thanks so much. Jordy being as conscientious as he is texted me and said, hey, I just got invited to perform at 54 Below. Like, can I still do this panel? And I was like, that's literally why we're doing this because you're a Yale undergrad performing in Manhattan right now, which is unbelievable. And finally, Tony. Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name's Tony. I use he, him pronouns. I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona, born and raised. And I am a sophomore in Benjamin Franklin College, majoring in political science with studies in political economy, as well as in the education studies program. Uh, on campus, I'm primarily involved with the Yale Concert Band as an alto and soprano saxophonist, as well as what we like to call the Yale Saxophone Orchestra, or YSO for short, the only group on campus that use that acronym, as well as the <laughs> saxophone quartet. Um, and in addition to that, a, a, a number of <coughs> Benjamin Franklin students in my year uh, worked on a holiday album, which I was able to co-produce um, and release last year. And so, yeah, I mean, happy to answer any questions about the concert band, saxophone in general, and as everyone else is the performing arts here at Yale. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, just to give you all um, at home a sense of how tonight's going to go, um, I will kind of speak a little bit about just the arts community at Yale, both curricularly and extracurricularly. Um, we'll hear some reflections about the performing arts um, from Margaret, um, and then we'll move to the questions. Um, first, we'll start with the questions that um, you all thoughtfully submitted um, when you were signing up for the session. And then around 7.40, 7.45 or so, we'll actually transition to live question and answer. So if you could hold off on using the question and answer feature until we kind of give you the green light, that would be fantastic. But first, we actually want to get to know a little bit about you all. So if you were tuning in here, um, what kind of performing arts are you most interested in? Um, and if we had our act together, everyone, I would have arranged like an acapella version of the Jeopardy theme song and we would have been performing it right now. Oh, wow. Uh, watching these polls come in is almost as exciting as every November, every four years. But um, 
see what we got. All right, almost all of you have voted. Let's see what we have. It looks like we have a really wonderful kind of distribution of people. We have dancers, thespians, vocal musicians, instrumental music, and other. I wish we could find out what those others were. Um, but regardless of whether you are a diehard saxophonist or a modern dancer or a singer, we're so excited that you are here. I think one of the most exciting things about performing arts here at Yale is that we are actually not a, um, an institute of music or a conservatory. Rather, um, we are a rigorous and incredibly profound community of performing artists that are both interested in learning the craft academically and practicing the craft um, in on stage or in the studio and so on and so forth. Um, most of you are very um, involved in, in music at home, extracurricularly, and maybe some of you are studying it academically as well. And I know that if you were like me when I was in high school, I wondered if there was a college experience out there that would allow me to consider or continue studying music at a very high level while not sacrificing my academics. And that is exactly the kind of education we offer here at Yale. One of the things you'll note about the performing arts experience here at Yale is that we do not award undergraduate degrees in the performing arts. So we do not award bachelors of music degrees or bachelor of dance degrees or BFAs. However, that's not to say that the education our students is, is receiving is not world class in its own right. Yale at its core is an undergraduate academic liberal arts institution. Um, all of our 80 plus different majors at Yale are housed in the same single institution. And the degrees that we award are bachelors of arts, bachelors of science and bachelors of science in engineering. So one of the things that I love about the panels that we have here tonight that almost none of them are actually majoring in music. Or, or theater and whatnot. So Yale is an undergraduate experience where you can pursue academic at the highest level while still receiving a world-class arts education and experience. Now Yale College, which is the four-year liberal arts college on campus, exists in the broader ecosystem of Yale University, which has 14 different graduate and professional schools as well. And I know that Margaret has some wonderful kind of reflections to share about that. But the fact that we have a school of music a school of drama, a school of art, a school of architecture, all of which are awarding masters and doctoral degrees to graduate students, means that our undergraduate community still benefits from all of the richness of that faculty, those, those courses and those, those facilities on campus. So essentially what you have here on campus academically is a rigorous intellectual experience in a liberal arts college that benefits from the stimulus and the excitement of a really robust performing arts community, both academically and extracurricularly. Now, if you are interested in studying the arts curricularly, one of the wonderful parts about Yale is that our liberal arts majors do certainly include um, areas of the arts. These would be fine art, architecture, computing in the arts, film and media studies, music, and theater and performance studies. So in all of these majors, you are earning a Bachelor of Arts degree. And so you're having the opportunity to study your field from a theory of composition, from history, and of course, from performance. And we'll share more on that in a bit. Some of you may be very interested in the joint program that we have with the School of Music, which is the highly selective five-year program where you earn a Bachelor of Arts from Yale College or a Bachelor of Science or Engineering degree, as well as a Master's of Music degree from the Yale School of Music in five years. Um, that is a very selective program that admits a very small number of students either right out of high school or at the end of their junior year. But even if you aren't admitted into that program, you can still certainly study music at a high level by declaring one of these majors or by engaging with the performance opportunities and the courses that we offer while majoring in another one of our 80 plus different majors. One of the, my favorite stories that I like to tell is that the concert master of the Yale Symphony Orchestra when I was a first year in the flute section um, was pre-med and a biology major. And that's the degree that he graduated with. And then he went to the Curtis Institute of Music right after graduating with a biology degree to study conducting for graduate school. So you don't even have to major in music here on campus or any of the arts fields to have a brilliant future in the performing arts after you graduate. Now, I think the vast majority of you on this call are going to be very, very interested in the extracurricular scene here on campus, which is as kind of deep as it is broad. Um, these are just some statistics to throw out there. I love the fact that we have over 25 different dance groups. 
Um, I was an acapella nerd in high school and I had no idea that there could be more than two acapella groups at a school and Yale has over 20. Um, the fact that we have over 250 different unique undergraduate theater productions every year, half of which Gabrielle has apparently choreographed, which is awesome, and six theater groups and five improv groups and eight sketch comedy groups just speaks to how excited undergraduates here are about, um, about the performing arts. I think something to keep in mind is that the extracurricular and the curricular are almost kind of blur together here. I think a lot of our undergraduates truly feel that their extracurricular involvements are just as formative, both artistically and intellectually, as the classes they take and, and the professors that they form connections with. Um, I know that some of our student panelists will have wonderful kind of reflections to share about meaningful productions that have morphed into senior projects, um, acapella tours that have taken them across the country and around the world. So there is a really a place for a, a student that is majoring in an academic field and then pursuing the performing arts at a very high extracurricular level. And I know our students will have lots more to share on that front. Now, I would be remiss to kind of talk about the performing arts at Yale without sharing some of the wonderful spaces in which all of these wonderful activities are happening. Um, whether you're interested in kind of producing music or, or um, using, you know, music notation software, um, there's dance studios, there's recording studios, there's kind of small theaters, um, there's cabaret spaces. Um, there's kind of small auto multi-purpose auditoriums, um, black box theaters with really cool lighting installation um, kind of capabilities. Um, and even kind of interdisciplinary spaces like this space called the Dome at the newly opened Georgeson Center. These are all peppered throughout campus and across the residential colleges, which hopefully you're familiar with. So there is no one quad or one corner of campus where the performing arts exist. Um, the performing arts truly exist anywhere and everywhere on campus, which means that we, the artistic spirit, um, it truly pervades every part of campus life. I know that our students find that attending acapella shows, comedy shows, dance shows, orchestra concerts, band concerts, is an integral part of their social life on the weekends, um, which is as, as nerdy as it sounds, um, but Yale is just kind of that kind of school, and, and I love that for our community. Some of the kind of more flagship spaces that we have on campus include the stunning University Theater. I cannot wait to see Rent this fall, um, which is our fall dramatic main stage musical, and it'll go up in this space. Um, the Adams Center for the Musical Arts has rehearsal spaces for the Glee Club, the Yale Concert Band, and the Yale Symphony Orchestra. Um, and it, it just underwent a stunning renovation. Um, and this is just kind of a picture of one of those spaces there. We also have Sprague Hall, which is the concert hall affiliated with the Yale School of Music. Um, you know, I have seen so many wonderful concerts at both the graduate and undergraduate level sitting in this auditorium here. And finally, perhaps the most iconic space on campus is Woolsey Hall, which is the largest seated auditorium here on campus. Um, you will find dance groups performing here. This is the home to the Yale Symphony Orchestra. Um, we played Stravinsky Rite of Spring in this space when I was in the YSO, and I still get misty-eyed thinking about it because that was just the greatest dream come true. Um, and seeing this picture, I'm sure Matthew has similar feelings. It just stirs, pulls up the heartstrings and stirs up all this emotion. I think the last thing that I'll leave it with before handing it over to, to Margaret is this idea that um, Yale certainly is a traditional university in, in many respects. We're the nation's third oldest institution of higher learning. Um, we're older than the United States itself. And so our performing arts tradition certainly pulls all the way back to the 1700s as well. Um, but the most inspiring thing that I've noticed um, with regards to the performing arts scene as an outsider who's still living on campus is the way in which students are redefining what it means to, to be a world-class performing arts university, right? Whether it's demanding the creation of new interdisciplinary spaces like the Shorten Center, or even thinking about the historical theatrical canon that's been at Yale and how it has, or more honestly, has not been inclusive to perspectives of different backgrounds, right? Um, the performing arts scene here is rooted in a rigorous tradition of, in, of artistic excellence, but really looks forward to, to innovating and, and, and really creating novel and dare I say provocative art while writing papers in political science and, and conducting psychology studies and so on and so forth. Margaret, given you know, all of the 
productions you've seen and just the the, the time you spent on campus. Um, do you have any kind of reflections you'd like to share about the arts here? Uh, I think you're on mute. One of the things that I always emphasize is that the, the role of the arts at Yale really is something that distinguishes it from our peer institutions. There are, there are other places where you'll get a great education. There are other places where whose campuses you'll love um, that have great housing that, you know, where you sort of say, yeah, 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 that's good, good, good. But I don't think that there's any place where the collective artistic community is, is as rich or as deep as at Yale. And so one of the things that um, is probably both a, a, a cause and a reflection is the fact that the graduate schools that John referred to, the graduate professional school in theater, in music, in art, and in architecture, um, we have, we are the only university in the United States that has those four graduate schools, each of which is one of the top in its field in the United States. So there are other great music conservatories at places that don't have an art school, or they have fabulous architecture programs, but they don't have a drama school. And Yale has all four of them, which I think really reflects an institutional commitment to the arts. These are expensive programs to run. These are not the alumni that tend to make the big bucks. These are not the medical school and the law school. And, and you can't have classes as big as you might be able to have at, at the law school. I mean, you, you, you know, a studio, an art studio has to have a small number of students. A, 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 music, a music studio is gonna have a small number of students. So, um, so it, 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 first of all, simply says that the arts are important to the institution, to the administration, to the community. The faculty who teach in those graduate schools are many of the same faculty who teach those undergraduate majors that John showed you listed on, the, on, that, on that sheet. And you'll often have graduate students in your, um, in your classroom as well. Um, in, in my um, first year at Yale, I, had, I took a, um, a history of dramatic literature course and the person teaching it was the Dean of the Drama School and the artistic director of the Yale Repertory Theater and half the class was drama students because they had to take it too. And we read plays all year long. So, um, so you, will, you will have that kind of interaction with those faculty and also with, with graduate students. And then, um, you know, I think just the richness of the extracurricular opportunities, which you're going to hear more about and which John sort of gave you a, a snapshot of is it's it's almost overwhelming. I mean, you you know, there are probably a thousand concerts a year on this campus. And maybe I mean, I've used that figure for a long time, maybe I should update it. But that is everything from the music faculty who are musicians in their own right and give concerts this the graduate students who give concerts to get their degrees all of those acapella singing groups, the Yale Symphony, the, the um, you know, the, 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 an all cello undergraduate group, the Yale Concert Band, the Marching Band, the Jazz Band. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and they give concerts. So, you know, you, there, it is often the case that you don't know which of three things to pick on, on any given night. I wanted to make one comment that that list that John um, put up mentioned six theater groups and in the next breath he said there were 250 theater productions on campus they are not all done by those six groups so one of the places that theater I mean, um, emerges is in our 14 residential colleges which are the undergraduate is the undergraduate focus of our uh, the, the housing um, focus of the undergraduate experience. And each of those colleges has a dramatic group that are turning uh, plays all year long. So that's one of the places that, you know, you, you, you just, you, you get up to fit 250 by way more than six theater groups. So I just wanted to, to point that out. Um, so I think it's a fabulous place. I love the fact that one after another, after another, these students did not mention arts majors. I think I heard one theater studies major, and yet they are deeply involved and, you know, have leadership in some of these organizations. And that is the proof. If anybody wants to know, can you do this stuff and also be a Yale student? The answer is yes. And we have seven proofs of that on the screen. So. Yeah, wonderful. Um, so why don't we have all of our panelists come back on screen? I'll stop sharing my screen so everyone blows up a little bit bigger. Um, and let's start with some of the questions. Um, and I'm so excited to hear the reflections from our current students. Um, Margaret, I'll start with the first question. 
Um, Emily from New Hampshire. Emily, I was just in New Hampshire um, the earlier part of this week. Maybe maybe we met on when I was on the road. Um, Emily asks, what kind of performing arts options are there for non majors? So if you're not majoring in music or uh, performance studies, um, you know what kind of options are there in terms of performing? Who wants to go? Yeah, it's Santana. Don't, yeah. don't all jump at once. Um, I think like on the surface, the amount of opportunities, like opportunities to perform for majors and non-majors are the exact same. Um, anyone correct me if I'm wrong, but um, there's not really any like sort of like, you know, like a theater production that you have to be a theater studies major to perform in. The only like type of, um, when it comes to like theater, the only type of like curricular theater production I could think of are like senior theses that are productions of like a musical or a play that people are putting up as their thesis in performance studies. But even then, um, anybody of any major of any program are able to participate in it, whether that be, you know, as an actor or as a choreographer or things, things like that. Um, so really, you do not have to be a major uh, performing arts major in any way to get involved in the same opportunities as people who are. Lil. Another great thing with this being such a liberal arts place that you can take classes in every major that you want to. So being somebody who was a theater studies major and then decided to change my major, I'm still able to take any of the theater studies classes that I want to. I mean, one of the best classes I've taken was um, Emily Coates' postmodern dance class, who Gabrielle mentioned. And that was seriously one of the best classes I've taken in my four years. And it was me, an architecture grad student, somebody who's studying econ, someone who's studying molecular biology. And so that just added to the richness of it. And so really, even if you want to engage in it in a curricular way, there's still lots of opportunity, no matter where you are in the academic circles here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Matthew, do you want to jump in? Yeah, on top of that, um, I, I definitely agree with what Lillian said. I and you know, a neuroscience major, and I take a ton of music classes, but I'm not a music major. And if you're wondering if you can do it, you definitely can. I'd say maybe I know two music majors in all of YSO. So it's <laughs> definitely not, uh, not a requirement. And um, you can get involved in, in pretty much any performance opportunity here, not being a music major or performing arts major. Thank you so much. Margaret, do you want to ask the next question? Yeah, so Sam from Massachusetts says, I am a performer who primarily specializes in non-classical music. What kinds of opportunities are there for me to learn and perform? So who wants to talk maybe about the, the jazz, the Yale Jazz Initiative that has been really building in recent years? Tony. Tony? Uh, yeah, so the Yale, there are t <clears throat> a few ways to get involved in, in jazz at Yale. <laughs> the official way, one, one of them, are the Yale Jazz Ensembles, um, a big band, 17-piece uh, big band, and a few combos that is run by a professional saxophonist named Wayne Scofford, and that falls under Yale bands um, officially, but it is um, entirely jazz-focused, um, as the name implies. And in addition to that, there is an undergraduate jazz collective which one of the things that they do every year, which I've been to a few of these, I know Stella mentioned that she's been to a few of these, um, is host these bi-weekly jam sessions. Um, everyone's welcome, everyone brings their own things, they sit on old campus and play music and everyone walks by and it's a lovely time. Um, and so there are a lot of different ways to get involved and even close to campus but not on campus, there is a weekly newsletter that goes out a lot about local clubs that are hosting jam sessions or jazz related shows that's uh, largely run by the undergraduate jazz collective and also just jazz interested people um, here at Yale. So definitely a lot of ways to get involved in jazz specifically. And um, yeah, and I, I was gonna say, if, if even if it's something that's not specifically jazz related, the undergraduate jazz collective is just a group of students interested in jazz that happen to be particularly interested in that genre of music. If it's a non-Western, uh, if, it's, if it's not classical and it's not jazz, um, and it's a, genre, it's, a, it's a genre that you're really interested in. It's just, it's as simple as finding other students that they're interested in it. And there's a lot of different ways to, to perform and, and learn. Stella, do you want to add to, to that? 
Yeah, sure. So I've been really lucky um, to perform with the Undergraduate Jazz Collective as a vocalist. Um, and I think overall, the music scene at Yale is so expansive. I'm a super senior. So I took a gap year for COVID. I've been here for a long time. And even just this year, I keep hearing about new bands and new collectives and new groups of people creating new music um, from all over the world, all different backgrounds, all different styles, all different levels of experience. Um, and I think that that's one of the most kind of special things about Yale is there's people who, as we've said, are completely not um, involved in music in an academic sense and have all of these incredible talents and the fact that we get to share in those, collaborate and also to watch beautiful art being made all the time is really special. And one other thing I'll add is that each residential college has um, a performing arts award. Um, and so a set amount of money is given to students who send in applications for um, performance ideas, for showcases, for ex exhibitions of different kinds. Um, and so a lot of productions happen that way. Um, and I know that a lot of people on this call can talk talk about that, especially Jordy. Um, but I know that specifically for different types of music, that's a beautiful way to get involved and to get support from the university, which is really great. There is also a prize given at graduation to the outgoing senior who has been the most, whatever, prominent, involved, whatever, um, you know, a real standout in, in the arts. Um, next question. I'm actually really excited that um, this is being asked because I think part of the best part of being a performing artist at Yale is working with our faculty and staff. Um, so Rena from California asks, um, what do you like about the faculty and staff in the performing arts department? Um, so maybe some of you can, can reflect on that and also share about some of your favorite kind of arts faculty and staff here on campus. Gabby, Gabrielle. Um, I think my favorite thing about the faculty on campus is how willing and open they are to share space with you and talk to you. It is really incredible that we learn from these world-class professors. And then if you stay after class, you can have just such incredible resource and get advice from them. Um, most professors hold office hours, which is basically just a, a set time each week where anyone can go um, and speak with the professors. Specifically, um, I mentioned Emily Coates, who's the head of dance. Um, I, my freshman year, I proposed to her, I want to start a dance festival at Yale, just as an idea. And then she said, okay, let's talk to the Schwarzman Center, which is the new art space on campus. And five years later, because I took a COVID gap year, um, it'll be uh, the Schwarzman Center is hosting a dance festival in Commons, which is the dining space. So really, if you have an idea, um, you can speak with faculty and they will support you and help bring your vision to life. Who else? Uh, Matthew, yeah. Yeah, I, I have a similar thing with um, Maestro Bowden, who's the conductor of the YSO, um, which, yeah, I agree. Sometimes it can be kind of shocking to have these amazing faculty just talk to you on such a personal level. I mean, he's conducted some amazing orchestras in the UK. He had a crazy career as a professional cellist, and, and now he's just here, like, conducting a CL undergrads. And so, um, yeah, I had a similar thing where I, I, I thought about how we could get more student performances, um, especially in YSO. And Maestro has been really supportive of um, creating a recital series and, and getting a lot of students to uh, perform at Sudler Hall, which is kind of the undergraduate performance space um, for music at least. And so, yeah, I think faculty are super supportive of, of new arts ideas. And really, you just have to come with it and come with a plan and, and they will help you see it through. Yeah. Well, um, I know we'll have anecdotes about kind of um, uh, people on campus that will pop up throughout the rest of the questions. So Margaret, do you want to take the next one? Uh, Margaret, I think you're on, on mute. 
I'm being a good girl on you here. Uh, Sarah from Connecticut says, if I want to take private lessons, how would I go about doing that? And would I get credit for them? So obviously in your intros, we heard a bunch of, I'm taking lessons for credit. Now I'm, I've done it for two years and I'm taking lessons for credit. So how did you guys do that? Stella. Okay. Um, I'm very excited about this. Um, so I started taking lessons for credit. Um, so I take voice lessons um, at the School of Music with um, a graduate student. And the way that that is facilitated is essentially there's an audition process. And I believe that it is exactly the same um, regardless of your instrument. So I'm taking them for voice, but they're the, all the same. So this, this carries over. Um, the auditions are once you're at Yale, not before. Yes. Once you're at Yale, that's an important thing to note. Um, so once you're at Yale and enrolling for classes, there is a class to enroll in called lessons. And um, essentially you can either take them for credit um, or not for credit. And it's an audition process, you audition. Um, I auditioned last spring, I got accepted. Um, and it was an amazing opportunity to have really a world-class one-on-one um, voice lesson every single week. Um, I got, you know, amazing different experience. My background is in jazz vocals and R&B and musical theater. Um, so get so getting an opportunity to explore classical voice was an amazing opportunity. Um, and yeah, it's a full credit for the semester and you can repeat them for credit every single semester thereafter. Um, the first two semesters that you take lessons for credit are pass fail. So they're not um, graded by letters. Um, and then after your second semester, you begin to be graded on the normal scale. Um, and so far I've had an amazing opportunity to do that. It's been, it's been great. Um, if there's anything else to add, happy to add that, but I think and that's- so Are you paying for those lessons? No, I am not. So that is the audition process. If you take them for credit, they are free. They are part, I suppose not free. They're part of Yale. They're part of the admission, um, your normal tuition for, for school. Um, and so it's included as all other classes would be. Um, and you are also able to pay for lessons at the School of Music um, if you're not taking them for credit. And anyone can do those regardless of your um, audition. So I think that's a really awesome way to get involved if you don't have space in your schedule for credit um, or are maybe not as um, advanced to take it for credit. Anyone can get involved and have a really amazing opportunity there. Anyone else taking lessons for credit on this? Yeah. Matthew, and you're, you're taking it in Oboe? Yeah, so this is my second year taking it in Oboe. Um, I guess I could, I could talk a little bit about how it works for instrumentalists. Uh, at least for woodwinds, we all study with graduate students also. So I was with a graduate student um, last year and I'm with a different graduate student this year. And for, I believe strings and piano, you can get a faculty member. Um, it's a little different for them, I think, because uh, those faculty are usually on campus and with when faculty, uh, they kind of travel all around the country. So it's hard to track them down. Um, but yeah, I also study with a grad student and uh, they're really helpful. I think, you know, one of the things coming to, to Yale uh, as an instrumentalist might be, you know, who's the teacher and like, that's, that's a really big thing. Um, and obviously there's not going to be, as a woodwind player, you're not going to have that um, designated faculty for you, but having a personal connection with a grad student who is amazing, I think is just as good. And um, sure, you're not going to conservatory where you have this like professor that's been there for however many years, but um, you can still learn so much from taking lessons from a grad student and um, just hearing what they have to say. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Matthew. Um, this is specifically about a, a part of our curriculum, but a lot of people both in the live chat and the pre-submitted questions had asked. Um, Ines Adora from China asks, could you tell me more about the Shen curriculum for musical theater? Um, who can speak to that? Jordy, yeah. Yeah, 
So the Shun Curriculum for Musical Theater is a subset of the theater classes that are taught at Yale. So we got some funding to be able to really invest in teaching musical theater, whether it's composition, whether it's performance, whether it's history, theory, to undergraduates. And so one of the really incredible opportunities that we have is we actually also have a voice lesson program. It's not for credit, but you can audition for a subsidy to train with people who have been on Broadway. We frequently have teachers who are kind of cycling through pretty quickly because they book Broadway shows. Um, one professor actually just left because she's now performing in Hades Town. She's playing for Bethany on Broadway, which is super cool. Um, so I've been able to take those classes. And as someone who wasn't able to take voice lessons before school, just because it's typically very expensive, um, being able to have that subsidy through Yale has been really, really helpful. And that's been able to allow me to take voice lessons for the first time. Additionally, we have a lot of curricular courses that were taught through Shen curriculum. So for example, I took a musical theater performance class through that same Shen curriculum with Santana and Gabrielle was also in our class. And it was an incredibly fun experience to really dive into that more conservatory style training. So a good amount of your classes here at Yale in the theater department and music department are pretty academically oriented. But having that Shen curriculum that really allows you to deep dive into the performance and the craft of musical theater has been really, really amazing and wonderful. We also have what's called the Shen Showcase at the end of every semester. So we have a composition class and a performance class. And at the end of every semester, the folks who have written musical theater songs will team up with folks in the performance class. And at the end of the semester, we'll sing the songs that have been written by Yale students at the end of the semester. And everybody who does Shen all semester comes and watches. And it's a beautiful, beautiful time to come together and appreciate and celebrate everybody's artistry at the end of the semester. And Jordy, you're getting credit from the theater studies department or the music department. Is that right? When you take those courses? So yes, you get credit for those courses. The one that does not have credit is the Shen Musical Theater Subsidized Voice Lessons, which are separate from um, your academic experience at Yale, but they are still subsidized through the Shen curriculum. Gabrielle. One specific Shannon class that was one of my favorites at Yale, um, they do production seminars, which basically over the course of a semester, you create and work and put up a show. This was a production seminar specifically about developing and performing a new musical. So there were two students on campus who wrote a musical and we had a professional director come in and basically create a musical with us and then put it on. Um, I saw there was a question in the chat uh, about this specifically um, that was open to all um, non-theater majors and I was a Shen class as well, but it was a really incredible experience. We basically got to learn what it's like to put on a Broadway show at Yale. Wonderful, amazing. Uh, Margaret, do you think yeah. maybe we should move to the live question and answer? What do you think? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. cool. There is one question that I'm gonna save for the end. Um, and it's Antonio and he's asking, what are your favorite memories when it comes to the arts? And I feel like we'll save that for the end. Um, but there are a lot of really wonderful questions here um, from attendees. Um, what One thing I do want to do though right now before we dive into some of these amazing questions, um, I'm going to drop in the chat basically a non-exhaustive but very long list of links um, that hopefully all of you at home can copy and paste. The first it has to do with supplementary materials and when it might be appropriate to submit one alongside your application to Yale College. And then the rest are just, it's really just the tip of the iceberg. But a lot of the questions that are being asked about like specific organizations, you know, how many ballet groups are there on campus, um, they're all available on our website. So I hope you'll use each of these links or some of these links at least as kind of a, a launch pad into exploring on the internet all the wonderful facets of performance arts here on campus. Um, one question that I thought was really uh, wonderful that we haven't touched upon yet um, was asked um, by an anonymous attendee. Hello, anonymous attendee. Um, and the question is, I've heard a lot about acting and live performing, but what about behind the scenes? Are there a lot of opportunities for tech design production practice for live theater in the undergraduate scene? Um, so who wants to speak to that? And I'm having PTSD because once I spilled an iced coffee on an element light board and I thought I was going to pass out. Um, Gabrielle. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, um, so basically every show that is put up, you have a creative team, but you also have your production team. And that is 
for the most part, entirely student run. Most people who enter the production side on campus, it's their first experience coming to Yale. We have a lot of peer mentor programs. Um, so if you want to try out some technical element of theater, you're welcome to try it out. And then there are, it's a multitude of opportunities. So it, it's really easy to get into that field if you're interested and get the support you need. Well. I'll also say that as someone who's done a lot of independent projects that sort of aside from the Dramat, which is our big theater organization, the tech people and the behind the scenes people are the most in demand people on campus. If you don't like text them within the first week of school, suddenly every production wants them. And so it's really you have so many opportunities to do things from a very simple play in your residential college to the biggest thing at um, on the stage in our biggest theater. And so really there's a ton of opportunities and you will be incredibly in demand if you come um, to you. There are a couple of questions asked by people who um, do music and also play a varsity sport and might consider playing a, a sport at Yale. And so what they're what they're really saying is, is that possible to do? Is there enough time? And there was another one I saw about sort of how do you deal with time management when you're majoring maybe in music, but doing another academic major. So maybe all of these together, you know, what about time commitment? Do you know people who are varsity athletes and also musicians? Um, would it be possible if you're in the YSO and there's six concerts a year, would it be possible to miss one or two during my winter season? So yeah, Matthew. Yeah, what I would say about that, um, YSO is a very large time commitment. Um, I We go two and a half hours twice a week. So that's five hours taken out of your week already, not including dress rehearsals and concerts. Uh, you can't really get away with missing a concert, um, but you know, once or twice during a concert cycle, you can, you know, you're sick or something comes up and you have to miss a rehearsal, fine. Um, so I don't actually know varsity athletes in, in the orchestra just because of how much time it takes. And um, a lot of times that's the reason people don't wanna do YSO. But even if you don't do YSO, there are a ton of other music groups on campus that have a lower time commitment than that. Um, I mentioned I played with Berkeley College Orchestra once uh, last semester, and they they rehearsed for an hour on, on Saturdays. Um, most people have Saturdays free. You only have to be there for an hour. And if you love playing your instrument and want to keep doing it at Yale, like that's a perfect group for you. Um, there's also uh, Davenport Pops Orchestra, which plays a lot of like fun music, <laughs> popular music arrangements for um, for different instruments. And I don't actually know their rehearsal schedule, but I do know that it's less of a commitment than YSO. So yes, there are options. There, there are definitely options that don't require as much time as other groups. And that's just something you kind of have to weigh when you're picking the groups that you want to be in. Yeah. I would just say one thing is that your experience in arts at Yale is so wholly customizable based on however much you want to invest and can invest. I know folks who work, you know, two student jobs and are MCDB majors, but still find time to put on their own shows. And that's what's so great about the structure of arts at Yale is that you can have that really high commitment, have that, you know, six, seven, eight hours a week commitment if you want. But there's also so many drop in and jam music groups. There's so many theater productions that are, you know, staged readings of shows that will rehearse maybe one, two hours, three hours total. There's so many opportunities to kind of invest however in much you want to, given your life outside of the arts. Yeah, and I think it just in reflecting on my experience at Yale as an undergrad and now kind of living as part of this community, um, there, there is a time management perspective to all of it. Um, and, and, and in the same way that we have varsity athletes who are, um, you know, in some of our less intense music ensembles or maybe some of our acapella groups, um, we have members of like Yale dancers that are also doing intramural sports or, you know, people that are on the board of the Dramat that are playing club soccer. Um, so, you know, college is just in generally, in general, a time where um, it may not always be possible 
to go 11 out of 10 on everything in your life. But we like to kind of think of that as a good thing, you know, learning that not everything has to be taken, taken to a different extreme. Yeah. Um, one question that I really enjoyed um, was from Eliza. Hi, Eliza. Thank you for joining us. And that was, are there any opportunities or events for singer songwriters on campus? Yes. Stella, you want to share about that? Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, it Yale is truly an overwhelming place for people who create art of all kinds. Um, and I think one of the best things about being a singer at Yale is you have not only opportunities to do things academically, extracurricularly, formally, in terms of in one of the acapella groups or some, there's other non-acapella singing opportunities, um, bands, there's so many ways to get involved. Um, one of my friends, so one of my friends, Abby is also a tour guide with me. Um, and so we both work for the admissions office. Um, and she created a band with my friend Ben and my friend Archer. And they're all singer songwriters and they collaborated together. And I thought that was so cool because Abby's in Tangle Up and Blue, which is um, the folk singing group. Ben was in Mixed Company, which is one of the a cappella groups. Archer was the musical director of Dukes of Yale. So a ton of different music groups and they all love creating music together. Um, so they have written music together and now started a band, which I think is really cool. Um, there's also a ton of opportunities for showcasing art. So I remember my first year in the Hopper Cabaret, there was um, a big showcase of all the singer songwriters in our class. And I think maybe Gabrielle was there too. It was an awesome opportunity to see some re really amazing original work of all genres, of all styles. Um, and I mean, I've been so lucky to be in an acapella group and get to watch every year um, and have auditions and see the amazing talent that exists here. Um, and that extends beyond performing, but also creating really amazing, be beautiful pieces. Jordy. Yeah, I'll speak to the more musical theater side of singer songwriting. One of my really wonderful friends, her name is Natalie Brown. She was in a class through the Shen curriculum with Janine Tesori. Janine Tesori is a brilliant, brilliant musical theater writer. She wrote Thoroughly Modern Millie and Shrek and Violet and so many brilliant Broadway shows. And Natalie was in that class and through that class started developing a musical version of For Colored Girls, the play that was uh, just recently in New York. If you got to see it, it's amazing. And she enjoyed it so much. And Janine Tesori, her professor, loved it also. She's now workshopping a full length version of this musical. She got the rights from the original writers of the show to be able to put on this musical workshop in December. So she's truly like now doing these insanely amazing projects. She was just, you know, at the American Theater Wing a couple nights ago at some gala promoting her show. So truly there's so many amazing opportunities if you really want to invest in singer songwriting. I myself was able to do a workshop of an original musical in December of last year that just won uh, a national contest. It's a national contest and it's gonna get a reading in New York City in a couple of months. And the song that I'm singing tonight, 54 Below, is from that musical as well. So it's really, really been full circle for me and for a lot of people recently um, in, in being able to write your own, your own stories and, and showcase them through, through musical theater at Yale. One of my favorite moments of the past year was I was on my Spotify Fresh Finds and this song called Moonlight by Drew came up. And I was like, this kid is awesome. So I Google searched Dhruv. Not only is he a Yale undergrad, I also read his application from Singapore, which is like hilarious. The next song, I kid you not, was this song called Late to the Party. Literally the one right below by this young, awesome young woman named Ime. And I Google searched her. She's also was a Yale undergrad. So the top two songs on my Spotify Fresh Finds that day were two Yale undergrads that were just like down the street, like eating in the dining hall. Um, and so if that doesn't speak to just like the ability to do singer songwriter at a high level, I don't know. I literally texted my mom, I was like, like, thank you so much for letting me go to Yale. Like, this is the coolest community to be a part of. And she was like, you're 32. Like, you can, you can, you can calm down. Stella, yeah. Just to comment on that, um, Drove is actually was in Shades with me, so my acapella group. And so I've toured the world with him. And I think that it's an incredible thing to get to watch 
a ton of alums from my acapella group are singer songwriters now um, and have gone on to pursue music in a really incredible professional way. And Driv is now on tour and he's invited a bunch of Shades alums to perform with him on that tour and collaborate. And we all sort of share albums. So that's, it's a very cool thing to watch people that you've seen grow up through this really formative time as artists and as students and as people um, do really amazing things. And so I think the opportunity for collaboration is also a huge bonus. So this is a question that um, is, I think sort of talks about um, the music community within the Yale community. This is from Keenan. Um, it sounds like the performing arts community has far reaches in different communities across campus. How supported are performing arts programs by the student body? How many people do you meet through the performing arts program versus through your major and residential college? Kind of like, does everybody else care about arts the way you guys do? Lil? I will say this is one of my favorite things about Yale is you truly can, it can be a rainy night and it's the middle of finals and the show is outside. Why did you decide to make the show outside? And all of your friends are going to be there. So happy to see you and just so happy to be part of that community. And really when you go to an audience, it's not just theater people. I would say it's vast majority of people who have never seen a comedy show or a musical or something like that in their life. And this is this to me is like really one of the biggest acts of love, I think, on this campus. And this is what makes me feel, I mean, we're all tour guides here. So whenever people ask me why Yale, it's because of this spirit that people show up for each other and they really care and they're so game for whatever you're going to show them. And so that's my favorite. Hands down, the thing I'll take away from these five years here is that that is the thing that has really made this place different than everyone else. Anybody else want to comment on that, Tony? Yeah, I'll just add really briefly. Uh, I went to uh, a, a big public school back in high school, and uh, we weren't great at football, but everyone still cared for some reason. Uh, nothing wrong with football, but <laughs> uh, but I will say that I remember back in high school, a lot of the uh, like ninety percent of the audience at our concerts were the parents of the people playing the concert, um, and very little. And so coming into Yale, that was basically what I was expecting. Not parents, obviously, but friends and whatnot. But it really is exactly what Lillian was describing. Um, just very much outpouring of love, regardless of what the event is. So. Yeah. Um, there is just an ethos of whether you are a performing artist or you just are a fan of performing arts. Um, it's cool to go to the shows um, and nerd out, nerd out about like that Emily Sandé cover or the SZA acapella song or the Stravinsky performance or, you know, something like that. Um, one so of the, one, of, one the, of the really big things that happens every year is these acapella I don't know what do you call what do you call those the evenings when a whole bunch of acapella groups are going to perform the jams market the jams yeah. I mean those play that they're packed these facilities are just packed and it's not just you know your roommate and your friend it's like everybody wants to be there sort of the place to be <laughs> and so none of you have talked about the Yale Symphony Orchestra Halloween show yet and yeah. how that is one of the, that is probably the hottest ticket on campus bar yeah. none what, when they sell out in what, 12 minutes or something? Who wants yeah. to talk about that? Well, Margaret, actually some of our panelists have to head off for rehearsals and or like debut performances at 54 Below. So I'm hoping that the Halloween show comes up in response to this question, but I wanted to give all of our panelists an opportunity to reflect on maybe their favorite arts memory on campus, right? Um, Jordy, do you want to start actually? Yes, I do have an eight o'clock call time. So I'll be running across the town after this. Ooh, go but, journey. Uh, I think one of the most wonderful experiences that I had at Yale was doing cabaret, which was the fall of Dramat Main Stage last fall. I cannot speak enough to the brilliance that is Gabrielle's choreography. Like, if you ever have a chance to see a Gabrielle Meter Hopper choreographed show, absolutely run. Um, and I finished one of what was probably the harder performances that we did just because it was, you know, a two show day and it was a taxing uh, show emotionally for me playing the MC. And I remember leaving and I was kind of exhausted, but I had a really great time on stage that day. And uh, James Bundy, who is the Dean of the Yale School of Drama and the artistic director of the Yale Repertory Theater came up to me and he said, that was the most 
incredible show that I have seen, the most incredible undergraduate production I've seen in my 20 years here. And nothing could have prepared me to hear that from a person that I revered so much. And that exact same night, I said, thank you. I was like trying not to cry. And I was trying to get my way back into the theater. And some student stopped me. And I didn't know him. He introduced himself. And he said that he was Jewish and had lost family in the Holocaust. And uh, the end of a cabaret has my character being sent to, to a concentration camp. And she said to me that I've never seen something on stage that made me feel seen. Um, and so he thanked me. And he said, thank you for telling that story and for doing it justice. And trust me, I tell you that I wept, wept all night, um, but it was an incredible thing to receive from someone that something that I had created, some art performance that I did, touched someone and made them feel seen. Because that is exactly why I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And it was the most incredible experience, I think, of my artistic career so far. So, I do have to run. Thank you all so much for your time. Um, yeah. But have a wonderful night. Thanks, Jordy. Lil, I know that you have a rehearsal, too, at some point, right? So do you want to yes. maybe share a little memory of yours? Yes, absolutely. So. Um, my friend and I, um, her name is Jess, we actually got um, admitted to Yale. We're the first students ever in my high school to have gone to an Ivy League school. And so it was this really big deal. And we had been in theater classes together. It was an art school that we had gone to. And we had this dream of doing this play um, since sophomore year of high school. And it was in a contemporary female playwrights class. And we had this idea that we would do it one day, but our school was quite underfunded, unfortunately. We just didn't have a lot of theater space. We didn't have ability to get the rights. And in our sophomore year at Yale, so four years later, we put on the production in the fall. And it was just such a gift to be able to have the space and the time and the community around us to be able to put on this production four years later. And that was just, that is like the highlight of my of my Yale time in the arts. It was so lovely. And we had people working on tech that were our friends. Our friend worked on music. Other friends were the actors in it. And just seeing everyone being able to um, see the work that had gone into four years of making this thing was so special. Thank you everyone so much. Have a great one. Yeah, thanks Lil. Who else wants to share something in terms of like a, a kind of formative arts memory? Oh my God, everyone, let's have everyone share. Uh, Santana. Sure, so I think definitely one of my favorite memories was my first Yale Dancers or YD show. Um, I remember one of the pieces I was in, um, I wasn't in like the beginning part, I came on in the middle of the piece as like a little solo when all the lights came down and there's like a spotlight and everything. And I, and I started like kind of strutting, slowly walking on and I just hear, um, so we, the, there's a tradition where at these, at YD shows, everyone yells, yeah, YD. And so I take two steps on stage and I'm immediately like assaulted with 17,000 yeah, YDs for my first uh, YD show. And although it seems a little chaotic, just like speaking it out, um, I think the amount of love and support you get from all your friends, um, both in the arts community and outside of it, um, is really just so great to have ex as like a performer. And it's, yeah, and it's just so great. Yeah. Gabrielle, do you want to share one too? Sure. Um, this was actually during COVID year 2021 when arts groups weren't really allowed to meet indoors. So every week on Beinecke Plaza, I taught tap classes for um, my group taps at Yale. And then as a, instead of our culminating semester performance, we filmed a dance film all around campus. Um, we had a professional videographer, we had a drone and it it was just, it, it felt such a, it was so incredible having a communal space during that time and having like dance and art be the center of that. It, it really just, it was so important to my Yale experience and it felt like it was such an artistic community. Matthew, what are you, what are you thinking about? Yeah, so I, I would be remiss not talking about the Halloween show being the, the resident YSO member. Um, and so my section last year um, dressed up as gummy bears. <laughs> and it, let me tell you, the whole process of learning the choreography for the song to come out onto the stage. So you give um, the thousand foot level description of what the YSO Halloween concert is. Sure, sure. So at 11.59 on, um, I guess, October 31st, 
um, YSO gives a show uh, which it's a we we make a silent film that has been written by a student, directed by a student, um, and it kind of pokes fun at the university and also like has a lot of inside jokes about student life. Uh, and YSO plays the music for it. So we'll play like Taylor Swift or, um, you know, we played, I think like Old Town Road or something uh, last year, but then we'll also um, put in like some pieces that we're working on for uh, that upcoming concert or um, just kind of, you know, classical pieces for different parts of the show. And so it's kind of, it's a really big deal on campus. Tickets sell out. Uh, I think it was last year within um, maybe less than a second. <laughs> how, many, how many people go? Sorry? How many people go to the concert? How many tickets? Uh, it's usually the full capacity of Woolsey. It's been a little bit less in the past years because of COVID, but uh, when it's, you know, when we're allowed to have the full capacity of Woolsey, that's like 2,000, 2, 2,500, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. completely packed, a completely full house. It so is. it's just an incredible experience. Everyone is so excited to be there. Everyone's Lots in costume. Everyone's in costume, um, even the audience members. Yeah. yeah. So, it's just an incredible experience and a ton and ton of fun. So, yeah. Tony, how about you? Um, yeah, I think um, for me personally, uh, I mentioned that that the first years of, of Benjamin Franklin College last year, um, we have a recording studio in our basement. And so a few of us who just all happen to be musicians. Um, Stella, a few of your acapella mates, uh, Victoria, Jion, and Alamon, we all got together and uh, recorded a little holiday album. Um, and the nicest moment, I just remembered spending like five days straight, like 12 hours in the studio, getting all of it finished. And then the final day before everyone started taking their finals, we all got hot chocolates, got in one of our suites, and then it was just played the entire album front to back. And it was a beautiful time. Um, but yeah, really lovely. And um, I think it, it also speaks to really how unstructured music can also be at Yale outside of uh, specific groups. So, yeah. Stella? It's a tough one. Tough to say. Um, tough to say my top pick. I will cheat and say two. I think overall experience, um, my first year, um, Shades went on a world tour to South Africa and we got to perform in Johannesburg and in Cape Town at so many different places. Um, and I think that that was for me, one of my highlights of my life. That was a trip I definitely would not have been able to take without Yale and without Shades. Um, so that's definitely one of the biggest gifts. Um, and on Yale's campus, my favorite memory was as a first year, my first solo that I ever sang with the group was at Battelle Chapel, which is a beautiful chapel on old campus, which is the oldest part of our campus. Um, and 900 people came to this concert and it is our Valentine's Day concert, V-Day Jam. Shades is the only group that does a Valentine's Day show. And I remember looking out into the audience and singing my first solo for that many people and feeling so supported on this campus from people who I had been in classes with or had met one time and said, hey, you should come to this concert. And everyone showed up. And looking out into the audience, I saw them. And I also saw all the alums from years past in Shades who came and sat in the front row and were there to cheer me on. Um, and yeah, I think that that was one of the first moments that I felt truly at home at Yale in ways that I don't even think I felt supported um, in my high school experience. And I went to a performing arts high school as John knows, cause he read my, my application. Um, and so I think that that's definitely my highlight. And the last thing that I was just gonna say was as John can say this, in my application to Yale, I chose Yale because of music and because of musical theater. Um, and I intended to be a musical theater major in the Shen curriculum. And I ended up 
majoring in cognitive science and doing research on climate change and doing my thesis at the school of environment. And I've still done all of the things that I wanted to extracurricular with, with music. And I didn't know that it was possible to do those things at once. And I don't think it would have been anywhere else. So it's been beautiful to have all these experiences and to do really incredible rigorous science um, on top of that. Margaret, can I ask you, do you have one that you, a memory that you really enjoy? And I think you got to come off mute as well. <laughs> yeah, Margaret, did you have like a memory that you wanted to share? Sorry, you're on mute, Margaret. Oh, Margaret, you're, I think you're still on mute. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I don't know, you know, since I wasn't really so much a performer, they're just, um, they're just various concerts especially concerts that i have been to um where i have just felt very moved by being there like look at this talent the maestro bouton invited me to a um a yale symphony concert last year maybe one of maybe the first time they were playing live again after the after the pandemic i'm not really sure and it they, there was a limited number of people you had to sit far apart i mean the, the woolsey hall was not full it was mostly students I, first of all i felt so honored to have been asked and i just sat there thinking this is incredible these these kids are so good and they are so passionate about what they do and they're not even majoring in music and i just felt i was just moved it was just really kind of an amazing experience. Yeah. I never get to like relive my arts career outside from this Zoom. So I'm going to humor everyone with two memories. Um, when I was in high school, I was convinced that I kind of had to give up my music career to be a serious student. Um, and there's two things that popped out of my, in my performing arts career. Y'all, As a member of the symphony orchestra, um, we had a performance um, of this piece called Prometheus, the Poem of Fire by a Russian composer named Alexander Scriabin. And it's a really rigorous in piece in that there is an instrument called the clavier à lumière or like keyboard of lights. And it's so rarely performed because it's like basically impossible to build this instrument. And there was a really awesome doctoral candidate named Anna who approached the YSO and our maestro at the time and said, hey, like, let's do this. Um, it's super avant-garde. It involves an organ that has these beams of light that coordinate with the music that the orchestra is playing. Um, and I think you, our performance of it was not perfect, but so intellectually daring and interdisciplinary. Um, and we're also on the Wikipedia page of the, of the um, piece. It says, in 2010, the Yale Symphony Orchestra performed this piece. So we kind of notched our little uh, our mark in like the canon of this piece, which I thought was really cool. And then the second piece was, I was part of the Whip and Poofs. And one time we were driving down to Washington, DC and we weren't really sure why. And it turns out that we were invited to sing at the White House for Michelle and Barack Obama's holiday party. And we have the photograph of us with the Obamas. And I never thought that my nerdy little obsession with acapella would ever take me to the nation's capital to perform for the leader of the free world at the time. Which is awesome. So, um, I'm yeah. just wondering if anybody has any other comment about why they ended up choosing Yale and and whether it did relate to the arts or it was not related to the arts. If it you know if it did relate, I mean you obviously all would have had very very great other options. Yeah, Matthew. Um, personally, it was absolutely related to the arts. I think most of my life. I mean, I've I played in you youth orchestras and played in band all throughout high school and elementary school and middle school. And it's been such a huge part of my life. And then on the, on the other hand, I have like science and this like other thing that I really love, but um, I really wanted somewhere where I knew uh, I'd be able to do both and do both at a high level. And that's ultimately why I ended up here and not say like a conservatory um, doing music at a, you know, maybe a conservatory like program within a school and then kind of also doing neuroscience or doing one of the dual degree programs. I think here you can really find a balance and um, I think it's definitely possible if you wanna do that. So I do also have to run, but thank you so much 
for for having me and um you know for everyone on the who's on the call i hope you choose yale no, I love that all of our panelists are like, oh, we have rehearsals now. Um, this is filled with seven to eight, we have rehearsals. Um, Tony Santana, anything you want to add? Um, no, everything honestly resonates with me and I've had pretty similar experiences. Yeah. And also, well, I'll second that. that. Yeah, well, thank you all so much for joining us for the Zoom. Um, you know, I, I think there are so many reasons why Yale is a wonderful place. Um, but for all of you that have tuned in tonight, um, hopefully you've gotten a sense of just how robust and how um, impactful the performing arts can be for our students here. Um, you know, whether or not you want to major in music um, or, or performance studies, whether or not you um, are thinking about submitting a supplementary material or even just tangentially interested in starting in the arts here, um, I think um, this really is a place where performing and creating and directing and dancing and singing and, and all of the above exist in such perfect harmony with um, intense academic study. So um, we're so glad that you're interested in Yale. Hopefully you found this session useful. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll all be at the Hall of Egypt soon. <laughs> I, I'm gonna add one comment for those of you whose love of the arts extends to the fine arts to say that my Zoom background is um, a room in the Yale Art Gallery, which is an utterly spectacular museum. It's the oldest university affiliated art gallery in the country, not in this very building, but the museum. And I happen to love Edward Hopper. And there are four Edward Hopper paintings in the art gallery. And the three of them are visible to, to, over my shoulder. And I just happened to find this and I thought, oh my God, that's my Zoom. So, I mean, it is just the most gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous building. So hopefully some of you will find your way over there. It's free. You can wander in for 10 minutes or four hours in, be in between concerts and classes. So. Well, thank you so much again. Um, check out all, all, all of our resources online. Um, huge thanks to our student panelists that joined us. Um, and have a great rest of your day or night. Thanks, everyone. Bye.